Hello and welcome back everyone to a video series dedicated show on Paramount Plus that is halfway through the season. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge All-Star Season 4 Episode 6. We are halfway through the 12 episode season, which is kind of sad now thinking about it because I don't want this season to end. It feels like it's going by way too quickly, but we do have an interesting episode to talk about. So let's jump in right where last episode left off, which was Leroy winning against Brandon and coming back to the challenge house. Leroy has a star and Cam is very proud of Leroy. And now that Leroy has a star, Cam is really wanting to go into the elimination and fight for a star herself. But when we check in on Kara, she's talking to Ryan. Now she wants to freeze out and block out Cam and Leroy from going into another elimination. If Cam goes in, the first star that she's gonna probably take is Kara's. If Leroy somehow goes back into an elimination, he's probably gonna take Kara's star and give it to Cam. Now it's time to get in the paint, block him out, and Kara's gonna do whatever it takes to keep her star with herself. The next day, we see Steve doing his makeshift workout with duct tape, rocks, and what looks to be a fanny pack. We find out that Ace falls asleep at random places in the house, and then we have yet another conversation between Laurel and Nicole. They are trying to get on the same page. They're trying to figure this thing out while taking each other's emotions, trying to be respectful of each other's feelings while also trying to figure out what each other feels about one another and the situation. Really Realistically, it's like, whatever. Let's just get to the daily challenge, which is a great segue because everybody does don their challenge gear, head down to meet up with TJ in a stadium for this week's daily challenge called Take a Seat. This daily challenge will be played in pairs. In phase one of this daily challenge, TJ will read a bunch of seats. Then the players will run over and try to get a seat within that section. This first phase will be played in five rounds. Each round, one team will be knocked out. So this phase one is played like musical chairs. And the teams that win round one will get an advantage in phase two. The pairs for this daily challenge are Cam and Leroy, Keefla and Tina, Adam and Flora, Ace and Nicole, Veronica and Steve, Brad and Laurel, Avery and Ryan, Kara and Jay, Derek and Jasmine. I liked how this daily challenge was set up because it tests the players in their stamina, how quick they were, and how detail-oriented they are. I mean, if I have to pinpoint somebody who really impressed me this episode was Derek. He did mention in his confessionals that he is a multi-champion in the hurdles and he showed everybody he's got the speed. He's got turbo jets on his legs. The problem was is that he was paired up with Jasmine and by the last round of phase one she really just couldn't keep up. Someone who has been doing really poorly in these daily challenges is Brad. Brad was panicking. He had no idea where the seats were. He went up instead of left. And by the time he got down there, he just couldn't get a seat. I don't know if Brad is just throwing the competition or if there is this like mental block with him. He is doing really poorly in these daily challenges to the point where even TJ was like, Brad is out of the competition, no shocker. As I mentioned, the first pair out was Brad and Laurel, then Adam and Flora, Veronica, Steve, Tina, and Kefla, where Kefla felt his hamstring like really tightening up and he couldn't run or didn't want to run very fast, possibly not wanting to risk further injury on the hamstring. So late in this phase one, heading into phase two, it was just not looking good for Tina and Kefla and Derek and Jasmine were the final pair to be eliminated in phase one. So in phase two, all the teams get to participate. TJ is gonna blow the horn. The four teams that have the advantage of the 30 second head start will take off to a specific section, look for a token. Once you find the token, you run it over to TJ, you can get your bag of hooks and then try to solve a scale puzzle. The first team to solve the scale puzzle will win. There'll be three teams, so six players in the middle section. Now to my surprise, Ace and Nicole actually win this competition. Not to say that I didn't think that they couldn't, but in phase one, they were one of the four teams to receive the advantage, and then they were the first team to secure a token, and then once they got to the puzzle, Ace was like a wizard. And it's really funny because Kara and Ace have been paired up with each other on multiple daily challenges, and even at the start of this one, 
Kara was like, do you want to switch things up? And Ace was like, you can do what you want. And so Kara went to Jay. Ace felt a little hurt by Kara going over to Jay instead of sticking with Ace. And lo and behold, Kara and Jay get second place, but ended up losing first place to Ace and Nicole. Congratulations to Ace and Nicole for winning. The teams in the middle group was Kara, Jay, Adam, Flora, and Avery, and Ryan, and everybody else was in the losers group. This is where TJ bamboozles everybody, including myself, because when I'm watching this, I'm like, all right, it's gonna be a women's day. And TJ does say, go back to the house and nominate two women and also two men, completely blindsiding everybody that this is a double elimination. Now coming back to the challenge house, there's so many combinations who to place a vote on where. So Kara and Jay, very close allies with each other are talking about what are the best options of who to send in. On the women's side, Kara really wants to send in Jasmine and Veronica, the two star holders into the elimination against one another. Jay is all for saying Veronica's name but we find out here that Jasmine is actually playing a really strong social game. She has way more connections than Cora had originally thought. But Jay's saying, oh, she's strolling herself to the final now that you gave her a star. There was just no way that Jasmine was gonna waltz her way to the final, even having a star and even having so many social ties in the game. There was gonna be somebody that was gonna turn on her if given the chance of keeping their word to Jasmine or making the final. But even in saying all of that, Kara finds out that she's gonna have an uphill battle if she wants to get Jasmine and Veronica voted into this week's elimination together. Now we do get a moment here with Kifla having a phone call from back home. We got the same scene last episode with Brandon after the daily challenge getting a phone call. Here we have Kifla talking to his lovely wife. We get a little bit more of their backstory as well as hearing that they want to open up a wellness facility, which is awesome. But again, this scene was bittersweet because we get a little bit more Kifla. We get a little bit more backstory to him. But given the context, we know that he's the one going into this week's elimination on the men's side. And then we get some just shenanigans between Laurel and Nicole. Hanging out, having a late night spa day. Ugh. All right, let's go on to the next day where we have Steve trying to tell Ryan like, I don't wanna go into the elimination. Steve isn't the most connected guy in the game as well as he's already been in the elimination before. So it's not looking good for him. Whereas on the opposite side, where Steve is like, I don't wanna go in, Cam is like, I wanna go in, please vote me in. I want an opportunity to get my star. So we take that information and head into the nominations where for the guy's side, it's pretty standard. Kifla is a unanimous decision among the six, getting six votes. You have Adam and Cara voting for Leroy, Avery voting for Brad, and everybody else voting for Steve. So we have Kifla and Steve nominated on the guy side, and then we get a bit of a mess on the women's nominations. We have Ryan kicking things off, voting for Tina and Cam. Flora seconds those nominations. Avery says, I'm cool with voting in Cam. She wants to go in, I'm cool with Cam and Leroy. Kara's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's calm down. I think we should vote in Jasmine and Veronica. Adam quickly has Kara's back, then Kara gives Jay an ultimatum because Jay is still not wanting to say Jasmine's name. So Kara's like, it's Jasmine or me, Jay. So Jay makes the decision that he's going to be with Kara. Kara says, the four of us can make whatever we want. So it's either an alliance or she's just talking about the vote. And then to get Avery on Kara's side, she says that when I, Kara, get sent into the elimination again, I will give that star to you, Avery. So Avery goes with whatever Kara wants to do. Kara gets Adam to change one of his votes to Laurel to burn vote on her. And the vote ends up being three Veronica, three Jasmine, where only 11 votes are counted, but that's enough to lock in Jasmine and Veronica. Leaving this nomination ceremony, people have strong feelings against Kara. Veronica is saying that she's like an energy vampire. She just sucks all the energy out of the room. Flora was very frustrated with how the nomination ceremony went, how Kara conducted herself, and was telling people to swap votes, change votes, and Kara's doing what she feels like she needs to do to keep her star safe, and she got her way. I don't think it was the most tactful or the most strategic way to go about these things because it does seem like Kara's target 
just got bigger and bigger. I mean, you have Nicole calling her a clown. You have Cam being frustrated. Jasmine was being frustrated. Again, Kara got her way. She did what she had to do. And she's going to be able to keep her star at the end of this episode. To me, what was one of the funnier moments is that Jasmine in the confessional was like, oh, I knew I was possibly going to be going into an elimination. I'm just glad I'm going up against someone who is around my skill level. Um, hello, Nicole won. She's looking for her star and she's seeing two people that she could possibly win against, especially if it's going to be a physical elimination. As long as there's no numbers in sight, there's no puzzle pieces or anything like that, she's looking at you and Veronica as I can win against these two, you know? So it's just funny that it was like, oh, well, I feel like I could win against Veronica, but you also have to worry that Nicole is going to just like step down and try to get her star from you as well. Now it's time for everybody to head down to the arena to meet up with TJ for this week's elimination where Ace is doing his best Ryan Fitz magic getup. TJ calls for Steve, Keefla, Veronica, and Jasmine to join him on the arena floor. Then TJ goes into the explanation for this week's elimination called Rope Rumble. There's a rope in the middle of this ring. The person to push the entire rope onto the opponent's side will win this elimination. TJ then asks Ace and Nicole if they would like to come down and try to play in the elimination and get their star. Ace says, no thank you, and Nicole then says, I'm going in. She originally picks to replace Jasmine, meaning that Nicole was gonna face off against Veronica in Rope Rumble, but when Nicole got down there and started talking to Veronica, Nicole makes a remark as like, oh, you were gonna be working with Kara, and Veronica's like, what are you talking, I'm not working with Kara, I want her out of the house. Veronica gives more explanation, and then Nicole tells TJ that, hey, I wanna switch. Can I bring Jasmine back down here? And TJ's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. So Veronica is now safe, and Jasmine comes walking back down the stairs, having to face off against Nicole in Rope Rumble. I'm very surprised that TJ allowed Nicole to backtrack her answer and switch out Veronica for Jasmine. I was originally surprised when Nicole decided to swap out with Jasmine, but not surprised that if she was able to switch up that she would wanna go up against Jasmine. I already thought Nicole could win against either two, but going up against Jasmine, I was like, well, Nicole's gonna get a star. My main critique about this elimination is that it feels unfinished. What came to my mind is that the challenge ordered for not so fast to happen, but the jungle gyms didn't come in on time. And all they had was this giant rope and they just decided like, we could just use the rope and make them push it out of the arena. Do you know what I mean? Like it just felt like they just had the rope there and they just decided like, we could do something with this rope, I guess. You know, maybe this could work. Would this be a fun elimination? Like I said, it just doesn't feel finished. It doesn't feel thought out at all. Steve and Keefla are up first. Keefla has more weight on Steve, but Steve has the technique of knowing how to wrestle as he has done it growing up. And also Keefla has that hamstring injury. So pushing off in the sand and trying to use any leverage was going to tire it out or he could feel it pull a little bit and then not want to risk further injury. When it came down to it, Steve was able to win against Kefla, meaning that Kefla was eliminated from the season. Kefla had a really great season in my opinion. I mean, this man had no real social connections coming into this game. He has been away from the challenge for 25 years. He played his heart out. He showed a fun side to his personality as well as a highly competitive side. He was able to get an elimination win against Cyrus, make it halfway through the season. And I loved seeing Kifla on the show, on All Stars. I pray that we're gonna see him back very, very soon on All Stars or the flagship show. Any, I wanna, I wanna see him. I don't, I don't care what spinoff or wherever we see him. I just wanna see Kifla back on our TVs and back on the challenge very, very soon. But then we move on to the women's side and I'm not gonna spend much time on this. Of course, Nicole wins. They try to make it seem like, oh, it's kind of a cool battle. No, Nicole gets to the rope and pulls the whole thing over with Jasmine inside the rope and Nicole wins. Nicole gets Jasmine's star and now the star holders for the women's side is Cora, Nicole, and Veronica. Steve gets Keefla's star, but now Steve has two stars. He has to give it to somebody else. I personally thought that with Steve and Adam being so close with each other, it was a slam dunk that Steve was gonna give it to Adam. He even addresses Adam saying, I really wanna run a final with you, but not right now. So instead he gives it to Ace, who is also a good friend to Steve as well. But he said that he didn't want to get the star, give it to Adam, put a target on Adam's back, put a target on both of their backs, 
So instead, give it to somebody who doesn't have any like affiliations with a whole bunch of people, who's not causing waves in the house, who's not gonna be a threat to anybody, and give it to Ace. So now, the star holders on the men's side is Ace, Steve, and Leroy. To me, this was a really strong episode. A good daily challenge, a meh elimination, but there was a lot of moving pieces, a lot of strategy that was happening, drama happening in the game, which just makes this more exciting, and I feel like the tension is just going to rise and rise and rise as we head closer and closer to the final, which is going to be relatively soon. But what did you think about this episode? Let me know down in the comment section below. What did you think about the daily challenge? Could you believe that Ace and Nicole won this thing? How do you feel about Kara and how she handling everybody's votes and the way she went about making sure that Veronica and Jasmine were nominated? Or do you think that there was a different way that she could go about it? where it didn't leave her with a bigger target on her back? Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you sad to see Keefla and Jasmine be eliminated from the season? Would you like to see them return for a future season? Let me know that as well down in the comment section below. And now that we've gotten to the halfway point, who do you think is in a really good spot of possibly making the final? And who do you think is going to have a really tough time in the upcoming episodes? Let me know anything and everything down in the comment section below. Can you believe that we're halfway through this season already? It just seemed like it started like two weeks ago. And now we're six episodes in. I cannot believe it. It's going way too fast in my opinion. But now I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge all-stars content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.